Matchmaker of this show, and I'd also like to thank Owen Murphy of Q Column Promotions for all their hard work in promoting this show. We start by giving them a round of applause. Okay, I honestly think that uh, Matchmaker Mickey Cuse has put together possibly the best Irish show, certainly this year, in the Fairways Hotel on the 12th of July. Take a look at the lineup. Topping the bill over eight rounds with the Irish Warrior Light Middle Weight title at stake is Nuri Hero Patrick Murphy. <laughs> and he's just home from uh, just home from Aussie Land. Um, just home from a huge success from the start to his professional career in Aussie Land. Patrick, a former Ulster senior champion in his first big contest as a professional in Australia, has won the Australian and uh, titles and the Asian titles at Light World Tournament. No main achievement for a fledging professional. His homecoming show in the Furries will let a lot of local pundits realise what a fresh and gifted young fighter they have in their midst. And he certainly hasn't picked an easy homecoming appearance either by accepting the challenge of former Irish champion. He is now a very experienced and successful professional fighter and one thing is for sure, it will be one ding dong of a confrontation. <laughs> Chief support is a real mouth-watering coming together of two old foes, yet still learning their trade. Eamon, King, Kane, O'Kane, hailing from Duty, country plan, <laughs> Dungiven, takes on Anthony Fitzgerald of Dublin, for the Irish middleweight title. I promise you these are two terrific combatants and it will be all about war from bed to bed for the 10 rounds. O'Kane holds a decision over his rival in the prize fighter last year, but Fitzy is determined to reverse that decision at the Burways. 18-year-old Hugh Fury impressed all of his talent with boxing last month in Belfast City Hall and intends to carry it on against Jerry Scavani from the Czech Republic. Six three-minute rounds should be interesting. Jamie Kennedy, fresh from a fight of the year debutant performance against the indestructible Willie Mitchell, will be hoping to make it two and zero against strong Donegal man, Brandon Peake. Four three-minute rounds. Philip Sutcliffe, Jr. Luke Keller, both former amateur champions. Last but not least, Mickey Hughes has attained the services of the son of legendary Steve Collins, Steve Collins Jr., making his professional <coughs> debut. He is an excellent prospect for the Cruiserweight division. His opponent has yet to be confirmed. Devastating Dublin puncher Philip Sutcliffe Jr. is in action against the opponent, still to be confirmed. Last but not least, former amateur Irish champion Luke Keller will be displaying his highly equipped talent. Now, if this isn't one of the best matched and exciting nights in this year's calendar, I don't know what is. I'm going to hand it over to the promoter, Owen Murphy. Thank you, Michelle. My name is Owen. Thank you all for coming this morning. And, uh, apologies to you, I'm here for Kyle McGavin, who's yours, and so Michelle's here. But I think it will be right hard for everyone to keep Michelle in the show. Once again, as I said, as soon as he is here, and as soon as you've been involved in the show, as, uh, as I said, I'm only here, 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 Excuse me, we we'll do this job. And, uh, it's good to see Bobson come back to, 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 
this part of the company that's us, says the father and after the father, the father each is a skip, see it, you know what that. I know most of the answers have been here, I know they are the dinner, I know the coaches, I know that they are walking in, you know what that. Probably that's the spell of this last one. And that shows we cancelled. You know, and that shows even this last, this last while, when we sit down and talk about this show here, you know, a lot of shows cancelled. But we just kept paying away, you know, and, and this show's going to go on. You know, and that's, that's what I think about it. And anybody's been walking around the show with us, you know, as coaches or boxers or, you know, and, and Mickey Hughes and that. They kept saying from the world, you know, this show's going to go on. You know, and we, we all focused on that, you know, and, and the shows were coming, you know. We said it was going to go on and that. That, that's uh, our chances to keep it going on. But um, I think I remember being introduced to the top table here. Um, the two girls, um, two girls, uh, I guess they're going to so organized. Yeah, they're so organized. Yes. Nick Latney. Nick Latney, the two characters. Good morning. And we have um, Bill Sutter Jr. Andy Fitzgerald, Harry Walker, Peter McDonald, and Wendy Zorro, Peter McGee, Um, 
the, the support has been, been great, it's, it's been immense. And uh, like like Dad says, like on pure promotion, if you want to take smaller shows back to back to the, the border region and try to get as much support as we can. We need these nights to be successful. The more people who can get through the door, the more successful it's gonna be. But um, I'm privileged to, to be top in the building in front of um, all my family and friends. I've, I've wanted to do it for so long. But um, Peter McDonough, I, I see this as a, as a stepping stone to maybe a last night or, or maybe more. I know I've got a hard fight in front of me. It's going to be a cracking fight. And um, I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Well, I think I'm going to go to the, to the Andy for sure. Andy's um, opponent, um, unfortunately, um, can't make it this morning. So, uh, Andy's not worried, he said, Andy says, as long as you make some money. So, that's all. Please do it. But I'm going to go back to the final one. Yeah, as I see that uh, Angel is not here tonight, uh, today, so hopefully he will show up next time. But I hear he's in Dublin now, up sparring with Spike, so after I do be Angel, I'm going to beat Spike as well, because it seems he, he's meant to have a contract or something for this Irish guy to fight the winner. So let's say that we leave fight this time, he's going to have to, because he has a contract. So, that's all I want to do. Thank you very much, Anna. And um, I have to turn out to maybe down to Liam McGee here. He's he's over there with, with um, Jimmy Candy and and Conor Williams. Right? So he's never left. We won't get. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to thank one for that. Uh, giving for giving Peter the, the opportunity. And uh, it's such a big calling. But um, the, the people know Peter's a season journey man. Well, people too to see the journey man, he's always true, he's always fit, he's only out there to win, there's a last victor. And uh, to be honest, I quite frankly think that uh, Paddy is a bit of more boy boy than like she in this fight. I think it's an easy fight for Peter, the, um, the stakes are going to clash, he's starting up fair, Peter's running in and off of Eddie, and I think they've, they've picked the wrong end this fight.
So I'm not supposed to say that, but Mickey uh, Hughes let us slip <laughs> last night. And um, yes, so and Jordan O'Keefe, Wonder Boy from uh, Britain's Got Talent, the finest, he's going to be appearing and he's going to be singing out. So you're all very, very welcome. And uh, thank you so much for coming here today for all your support. And I hope you're going to turn up at the fight. Thank you. Well, that's it from the top table now. The best time you want to ask the last is free for you to do so. Can we do one-on-one? You do it. Do anything you want? Yeah. Well, ask the back of the table. Ask some questions. Ask some questions. Come on, what's up? This guy wants to talk. He comes the whole world over from England, he won't even ask some questions. Peter, you seem very confident in this. Are you convinced you're going to win next Friday night? Um, well, I'll be here otherwise, won't I? You know, and the thing is, like I said about your record again and, uh, and my fights again. Three days notice, fighting in title fights, taking off a stone in weight, doing this, doing that. Listen, three weeks, I'm going to be like a machine, you know? And look, I, 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 I give them all the respect in the world, what they've given to me, by giving me this fight. But believe me, there's only going to be one winner come Saturday night, Friday night. Or Saturday as well, when it's Saturday night. Any more questions? Any more questions? Don't be shy. There's going to be one winner. His name's going to be Paddy Murphy. Yeah. Well, we've only got a look at his record, don't we? And um, obviously, that's why they didn't know his name, because they don't even know who he is. And uh, obviously, the people he's fought, and, you know, I mean, the last man he fought was about, I don't know if he was, was it Jamie Collins last moment? <laughs> he was a flyweight. Well, I didn't think he was a flyweight the last moment. Yeah, and uh, how it in Japan. I still thought he won the fight. I still think he's an unbeaten fighter. So I don't disrespect him. But look what happened to Lee Purdy, everybody. With a week and a half service. And just got on to fight for a world title. It's all about timing. And his timing's wrong. What weight is the limit for the fight? It's not a lot of weight, is it? 10-7-12. Obviously, it's a tough fight and uh, short notice. So I won't make like that limit within three weeks, you know? So... I'm, um, I'm taking the fight a wee bit heavier. It shows um, sort of the commitment I have to, to having a, a difficult fight. But um, just going back to what Eamon said, he thinks it's bitten off more than he can chew. I know exactly how much I've bitten off. I've trained hard. I've come to the end of my eight-week training camp. I've never hit as hard. I've never felt as fit. And there's only one winner in the night, and, and the referee's going to be raising my hand. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, that's the answer. We did Australia, Hong Kong, we set this in Australia, we all know what the Australian device of last to say. It's sad and you go up there and build a an Indy <coughs> an indie fake clear record of undefeated. But all the least nice coming over here in Ireland to where proper boxing is and I uh, like I could see that uh, people are stopping on the night. Uh, you, you don't have to go here different levels, but um, I've, been, I've seen Peter over the years. I know what type of, I know what type of fighter he is. I know what it says his heart is. And uh, I've seen uh, Paddy Boxing. It's just the stage of our clash. He's just going to be, uh, he's going to be, just be too strong in the space. So I don't think Paddy, I don't think Paddy, I'll, I'll know how to deal with it. Um, I can't see why um, everyone thinks that Paddy Boxing is a Australian boxing is as good. It's at a great level, you know, the amateurs aren't shining at the, at the Olympic Games and the, and the Commonwealth Games and everything else, but the professionals are going well. They've gone and gave the world champion. Like, you know, there are a lot of great boxers out there. And, like, um, I'm over here not only to prove that, that I'm an Irish man and I'm a good Irish boxer, but I'm here to prove that the level of Australian boxing is, is pretty good as well. The difference is this. The difference is this, right? I've been all over the world. I fought WBA number once. I've, I've, been, I've, I've been everywhere. People's backyards. It don't matter where I go, at the end of the day, I'm coming to fight, I'm coming to win, I'm going to win, believe me, I'm going to win, I'm telling you all now, I'm going to win. I said it against Michael Gomez, God knows how long ago, and they still ripped me off after I beat him. But, you know, I feel confident, I feel ready, and I'm looking forward to smashing into pieces. Wow. Paddy, I think people are forgetting that you're only out in a couple of years, and you can come from one of the best boxing camps in the country. Anybody that has watched uh, amateur boxing in Ireland knows that you are a supreme boxer. And can I just volunteer to take that home for you? <laughs> <laughs>
I've been in the room my life since I was seven years old. I'm more known than I than him anyway. I, when I first came over, I said, who is he? Who is this kid? I asked him his name. Who? He won an all Ireland, someone said. I said, he never won an all Ireland. You know what I mean? He might have won it when he was six years old. But he ain't, he ain't done nothing. What's he done? Who's he beat? He ain't beat nobody. If he beats me, comes next Friday, he beats somebody.
Habibi, la bravo. As a Kamala, from out the shower, what do you say to the Irish boxing public who's been loads of cans and obviously you said the show has gone ahead and but what do you say to the Irish boxing public if they want to see kind of more shows happening up this part of the world? Well, I have to say this at the end of it, how do you say it all? To, to run shows, it, it, it is that effects. You need to put both of the states, as said. You know, and you need to have, you need to have to prefer coaches and ambassadors and trainers. And honestly, I think, honestly, boxing, I think, has lost, lost its way with people arguing and fighting all the time. Instead of getting more home shows going, get more home boxers involved in the deal and, and things like that. And like, this show would be, I, we've been looking at like, um, the figures of, of shows that, that, that has been cancelled. You know, and we kept looking at that at the negative end, we'd probably cancel ours. But we sit down around the table at the start of this show and, you know, before we even had a boxer's name, we said we won all this show, this show is going to work. And I think we've done, we've lost the positive. We've never had a negativity in. This day is Mickey phone and he said, this one's off, or that one's off, or this one's doing this, you know. But he always finished on a positive note. You know, when anybody else said down here, I, I, I never leave them. I never leave that company on this and leave them on a positive note. I never leave them. We'll, we'll see about that tomorrow or whatever. We always leave them. I think that's what the boxer needs. It needs more positive. Right? There's a lot of negativity at the moment, and I think when you're going on the show, you know, when you're going on the show, you're going to have to learn. The positive from the world go, and no matter, no matter what, make the show go. It's about making it go. And it's, it's up to not just the people that's on the show, it's up to the people that they don't want to make it handy for them. That's the coaches. If they want the boxer and shows, you know, they have to be heard. To, to help with um, no common and say we're well, not just picking a box one and, and selling tickets for a push. What else can we do? What else can we do? <laughs> we'll say this. Yeah, I'll make it on What else can we do to help? It's not just beginning the boxes on this week, but help them get the shows on. And this way, you know, it'll keep us back to this country. And I have no doubt, boxing and, boxing and people say it's at not time below now. But I have no doubt, you know, the likes of this show that goes ahead, people come to it. It'll, it, it, it'll, it'll we really need to be here. They want to see more of this. And I do believe, I do believe there's good people and good supporters for that. There's a, there's a good opening for it in this area. And to be honest, a lot of us gone out there until, until quite a lot of us and, and stuff like that there. And if you, even in the Alchie game, if you're going to show the night and, you, and you're selling tickets and you're 10 hours champions on in the Alchie game and you're selling tickets at £5 a piece, you have a job selling all the tickets. And that's been honest. You know, that, that's, that's been honest. That's reality. So, there's something the whole way back to the stuff that we've done with the other. It's about getting people into Boston, give it a negativity, you know, get more positive data, and I think that's Boston will kick off again. Thanks. Thank I'll tell you what the problem with boxing is, right? You put eight people down one side of the card, and you put eight people down the other side of the card. The Red Corner will win, I guarantee you, at least seven of eight fights every week, week in, week out. What's a Frank Warren show? Watch a Barry Young show, watch all these shows. But let me tell you, this show they part, I mean, I've, I've, my last three shows have been TV show, well, I always fight on TV, but, you know, this show that he's part here, I mean, they're, they're TV fights. I mean, Amy O'Kane and Fitzgerald's a TV fight, it's a cracking fight. It, you, know, it, you know, there should be TV involved in it. And the problem why TV pull out of boxing is, is down to pros. I'll tell you why, because they put a fighter on, he does 150 tickets, they bring a man over that can't even fight, he's got one arm, you know, and who's interested in watching that? So we, we get the general public who are coming to watch the fights, they're filtering out as well. So that's why I don't, but this show is a genuinely good show, you know, and, and genuinely people want to fight the show. Peter, Stephen, all that, the George says his show. If you finish your word as he says, and one side good and the other one's special was, people, people don't want to see that. You know, there's, there's a good boss of support about this country, about the, about the end of the band. And if you put on a good 50-50 bounce, people will come to see it. Great. 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 All these people say, no, oh, it's Phil Silver's the one professional who really had the fight. Mm -hmm. Peter McDonough, you were asking, it would be a step back, and all these people, 
I have to take it easy. You have to remember all these people are going through 20 and 40 fights without fighting anyone. I'll fight someone at that 10 weeks hard training. I'll fight someone big after 10 weeks hard training. 9 weeks hard training. That's no problem. If you're saying, oh, I'll get this fellow for him, get the me toward fight. I'll fight anyone. Give me to 10 weeks training or the 8 weeks training or whatever. Like, like Peter said, you need a few weeks training. You can't step in after a few days. I mean, you can't. You have to be training all the time. I love me holidays, I love me food, like everyone else. But still, I'll fight anyone, give me a few weeks notice and we, we go from there. The third fight, we say, we can't beat the fight at 20 or 30 fights, that's no problem. Like he says, Johnny man, you can't beat him. Half of my family says, oh, I know you're fighting this week, I know you're fighting that week. Oh, you're going to be fighting, I'm not going. You're waiting on not going out in the fourth round. That's not how you sell tickets with Peter said himself. You have to get the fights in on the card on six hundred. We have to remember this is my tour for you. When you have the tone professional, a long way to go. Like Peter's forty five there, he's saying. He's fought around the world, he's fought this fella and this fella. That's that's all part of the professional game and I'm and I'm willing for all that to come through and hopefully someone get behind me and we'll get all them away fights and give everyone give everyone the seats in the in the stage and they say, Oh look at this fight, this fight is gonna be amazing. Well, get someone there and I'll give me the week's notice and we'll get, we'll go, we'll get to go ahead with we'll fight. I mean, put all the smiles in people's faces. Well, first of all, the downturn with with the way boxing has the negativity, which Peter just said, he went to a show and he didn't really mark the card before the show even steps ahead. Because of the journey men coming in, taking all exposures on that, by people coming in at the last minute, we need opponents for some of the guys that are just coming up, of course. It's hard to get you and fill a fight unless we go abroad because no Irish fellow wants to fight him. Right, unless you give them mad money, right, and most promoters don't have mad money at the moment. Young Paddy there take a new one, such a short notice. I thought it was a bit dodgy myself, right? I see him Paddy box and spar with me on young lady. Very good. I wouldn't take him for granted, right? But I still said it was a dodgy one taking you. It was a great 50 50 chance for you, for you and for himself, topping the bill. You're not going to get a better bill than Andy Fitzgerald and O'Kane and young Kennedy, he was exceptional. I know he said he was drawn into a fight with young Mitchell, which was a cracking fight. They gave value for money up in the Ox and Ox appeal up in the city hall in Belfast. It was a fight of the night. I don't know this lad. Uh, at the end, you, you would... You could just have a fight. I didn't see a fight. So, but I know uh, Andy Fitzgerald and O'Kane is going to be a cracking fight. Right, I know it's on top of the bill, but it's it's gonna be anyone that pays the forty or fifty or hundred quid, right? It's gonna be a great value for that. And with the competition between the two lads there, very good. He speaks well and he takes he takes he doesn't take it for granted, which he said at the start. He has respect for it. And any fighter that has, every fighter should have respect for their opponent, right? No matter how handy or how journey man they are. Because every one of them can punch, maybe they're not a big puncher, but they can punch. As Andy Fitzgerald in the point depot dropped his hand once, winning the fight on the skirt, he started getting cocky, they got knocked out. Right? That was why he joined him on as well. Right? So every fight there that, that evening, right? every fight on the evening in the dock is value for money. And if you don't get the bones, the Terrans and the people of all the kids that are in close don't try and support it. Boxing will go on the downturn, right? And we're glad to be involved with Good Colour Promotion and all, and Mickey Hughes doing the matchmaking. And there's some great fights on the card. And thanks for having us. And again, obviously, with um, Phil Suffolk Jr., I don't want to dig it if he's only had two fights, you know, he's on his third fight, and Listen, you could bring someone in at an hour's notice for him. Because at the end of the day, he's still learning his trade. Which, which, you know, 
I, I'm not on about kids about three flights or eight flights. I'm on about kids about twenty flights or eighteen flights. Frank Warren flights. And I'm not digging for it, right? I'm not digging a deal, and I'm going to say every promoter because they bring these people in at short notice when they've had a kid training for eight or ten weeks, and they've won two flats. It, it, it's just a joke, and it, all you're doing is robbing the public. You know, if I can sell tickets when you're fighting someone you know ain't going to fight, and you know ain't coming to fight, you know, and, and that is where boxing's gone wrong. Uh, Kel Brook, he's world class. What's he fighting Carlson Jones again for? I mean, he's always fighting for each other on top fight, you know? Because he knows that he ain't at that level. So, you know, that is where boxing has gone wrong. If everyone fights each other, if everyone's got a mentality, all of us on this table have, we don't fight each other tomorrow, right? If everyone had that mentality, then boxing would be big in Ireland again. I'll be big all over the world again. He don't want to fight him because of this, he don't want to fight him because of that. So I say. Thank you, and just before I go out that way, and don't forget um, the way into here next Thursday at 12 o'clock. I'd also like to thank you in there and, and Bellini said, you know, they put on the show for this morning, though I asked him that day. It was no bother, like, I have to congratulate Bellini, give me a round of applause. And that's me, I'm just happy to share this with those Thanks. Once again, I'd like to thank Mickey and uh, Mickey Hughes and Ian Murphy for, for putting off this fabulous event. Um, as they all said, it takes funds to get on seats to sell tickets, so do your best. I hope you're all going to turn up, and it's going to be a fabulous event. Thank you. Thank you.